Assalamu alaikum everybody, this is your Arabic teacher Simon, a very very warm welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today as we usually do, we're doing another Wednesday walkthrough. Um, in the past we've done the story of one of the prophets, we did a story of the prophet Hud alayhi salam, we went through a little bit of poetry most recently, we did a little bit of a poem called Thil Quds, and um, you know I, I asked some of you guys to you know write in to me, um, obviously you can still write in to me if you have questions or any suggestions about the channel or anything, um, at arabicsimon.gmail.com. And a lot of you wrote in with suggestions for new texts that I can walk you through here on Wednesdays. And um, we came across a really nice idea. Some of you wrote in and said, Sam, you've never talked about any stories of Joha before. So I thought it'd be a nice opportunity. You know, now we've got the opportunity to come, and, come into a new text and uh, we do a little bit of a story of Joha. So in this video, we'll do a little introduction um, into who on earth Joha is. For a lot of you, it might be the first time you've ever heard of Joha. And... Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll get into some of the language. We'll walk through, um, I suppose, I, like, like up here with the text that I have in front of me, we'll probably walk through about five lines of it. Um, there'll be quite a lot that we'll go through. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I never really want these videos to, to run over more than sort of 20 minutes. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see how we get on, inshallah. Um, before we actually get into the text, I have some announcements. This is Irlan time. First and foremost, uh, book three, for those of you on the 60 Steps program, these, 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 announce, these first couple of announcements are for you. Uh, book three will be in the resources library on the 31st of January. Um, that's the date. It's pretty much ready to go in the resources on the 31st of January, and I think you guys will be ready for it as well. Um, and book four. We'll go into the resources library on the 28th of March. Not just the books, all of the videos and bonus resources will go into the resources library as well at, at those times. Um, just a little reminder for you, um, uh, book three. Um, in book three, there'll be no harakat in any of the texts and any of the exercises. Uh, when you first meet a word in my curriculum, you'll always be given the harakat so you know how to say it. But um, book three, one of the main differences between book two to book three is that there are no harakat anymore in book three. And the transition to book four is that it's all in Arabic. The whole book is in Arabic. And you'll be ready for that, inshallah, by the time book four comes out. Um, next thing is I have 15 uh, book ones. Um, they're over there. They're sitting right there. I've got 15 of them printed, bound, and ready to go. So any of you out there who are thinking of joining the Arabic in 60 Steps program, now is a good time to do it because your book can be in the post in the morning. Um, yeah, sometimes when, when I use up all the books, sometimes there can be a delay in me getting the next batch of books. But I have 15 right now, so now is a good time to, to claim your first book, inshallah. I'll have it posted to you. That's completely for free. The book's for free. The posting's free. Everything is for free if you live in the UK. Uh, and then the next thing for all of you, not just those of you who are on the 60 Steps program, uh, grammar time tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, yeah, tomorrow grammar time. In fact, I have the, the grammar topics in front of me that I'll be talking about on grammar time. I'm going to turn that over, actually. I'll put it over here so you guys can't see it. Get a sneak peek of what we'll be talking about in grammar time. So yeah, grammar time tomorrow at 5 p.m. Make sure you're there if you love Arabic grammar anywhere near as much as I do. Let's get into the text, inshallah. So, well, actually, you know, before we get into the text, let's just talk about Joha for, for a minute. So, so Joha is not an author. Um, Joha is not a writer. Um, Joha is a character. Um, you know, some people believe that he was a real person who existed once, and some people believe that he is just kind of a kind of stock character for literature who kind of appears um, as a character in you know in different literature. He's usually the main character, but um, you know, but I have known of there being um, texts in which he kind of just appears as like a kind of as kind of like a secondary character, but. Um, yeah, so Joha is kind of a, a, a bit of a simpleton character, I suppose. It's it's sort of quite early Arabic literature comedy, I suppose. And there, there are always kind of stories where, where Joha is kind of... Um, the, the message of the story is a sort of ignorance is bliss, I suppose, really. Like, he, he often gets himself in situations where people might be laughing at him or he's misunderstood something. But he's coming out of it happy somehow, like... Um, yeah, he sort of he sort of manages to sort of override being ridiculed and stuff because he's so sort of simple. Like he's just, he's just a real simpleton um, in these stories. Like he makes mistakes, he does silly things, he gets tricked a lot of the time, and um, yeah, and that's that's Joha. Um, I don't really know who came up with him in the beginning, but he's been in Arabic literature for li literally centuries. Um, yeah, and um, you know his his the stories of him are good are a good insight into. Um, Arab culture and Arab reference points and stuff. You know, if you were to, if you were to just look up stories of Joha, um, then you would find that, um, you know, you would find that a lot of them have camels and donkeys, and a lot, a lot of them are in the marketplace. Um, you know, there's usually mentions of religion in them somewhere. Um, there's stories of Joha getting in trouble because he forgot to say Inshallah. Um, 
yeah, there's there's all kinds of things like that. There's there's loads of things on YouTube like little like videos like little Joha um, story videos. Um, but but the the texts of Joha are very common for Arabic students to 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 learn, even even for beginners. And the language, as as you'll see in a minute, is very accessible for beginners. And I thought it would just be a really nice fit for our channel. Really good opportunity for you guys to be aware of it because whether you studied Arabic through like a Western canon or through like a like a Middle Eastern classical canon, you, you usually know who Joha is. Very nice. So without further ado, let's not long it out too much. Let's let's get stuck into the nitty gritty of it. So um so yeah, as you see up here, we have qissatu, qissatu juha. Juha is just written like that. It's just a dhamma and a fatha. Juha. You know, a lot of you might be thinking that's not an Arab name you've heard before. It's very possible that it actually comes from Persian. Um, you know, a lot of these kind of um, sort of classical era, Abbasid era um, texts and, and and Arabic literature has its is heavily influenced by, by by Persian. So it could actually be Persian in its origin. Um, but but I don't know. Um, but Qissatul Joha wal Himar. Yeah, so a Himar is obviously a donkey. Wal Himar. Okay, so let's have a look at it, inshallah. So it's the story of Joha and the and the Himar and the donkey. So we have Arada Joha and Yashtari Himaran. That's a really nice sort of simple just verb sentence, right? So We've got just our, those of you who are in lesson four of the, of the program will be psyched because we have a verb, a subject, and then, and then an object at the end. Yeah, that, that's technically, that's, that's, that's sort of the trend of Arabic verb sentence word order. You'll have verb, subject, object. We have another little thing in the middle here, which is not a problem at all. We'll just talk it through. So the verb arada is a form four verb. Arada just meaning to want. Arada in the present tense, yuridu. So joha, joha wanted. What did he want? En, en yashteria. En yashteri. En yashteri. I say yashteria just because usually with um with en you put a fatha um on, on the end of the word, like if it was something like I want to study. Uridu en adrusa. You know, you have adrusa on the end most of the time. Um, but yeah, here we have Arada Joha and Yashtari Himaran. So we have Joha wanted to, to buy the verb Ishtara Yashtari. Um, yeah, Yashtari means to, to, to buy something. Um, and it's used, it doesn't really have any nuance to it, it's just just to buy. So Joha wanted to buy Himaran. He wanted to buy a Himar, um, a donkey. Yeah, and that's why it's Himaran because this, this is Maf'ulun Bihi. This is the, the object of the sentence. So Joha wanted to buy a donkey. Fa dhahaba ila suqi. So he went to the souk. Yeah, you know, but even English speakers who have been to Morocco on holiday or whatever know the souk is the, the word for a word for a market, yeah. So fa dhahaba ila souk. So he went to the market. We need to remember to use ila whenever we use dhahaba as well by the way. Um dhahaba. Um not 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 all the time, but most of the time like you know, it, it's just like in English. Like in English, we can't say I went. I went market, um, but but in, but I mention it because in some languages you can. Um, like I, I know in I know in Somali, you you can just say, Like I, I went to the market. You you can do that in Somali. You don't need any preposition in them. But anyway, we we'll go back to the Arabic. So um yeah, so he went to the market. Tawakafa عند حمار أعجبه. توقف عند حمار أعجبه. So tawakkafa, tawakkafa. It's a form five verb here. Tawakkafa. The uh, the ta at the beginning. Don't be misled to think that it is. Um, it means you know it's conjugated in the present tense to be like a, you know you stopped or she stopped or something. The verb tawakkafa is just a form five verb, past tense. He sort of stopped. To to stop to tawakkafa inda something is sort of like to, to stop, to stop for something, to stop to look at a himar. Yeah, so توقف عند حمار أعجبه. Um, this is this really is a, a relative clause actually. Um, it's, it's so glaringly obvious to me because I've I've just done some of the lessons um, that, that talk about this in the sixty steps program. But um, so he stopped. He stopped. He stopped at. He stopped at a donkey, which um, which sort of pleased him. Yeah, أعجبه. Um, yeah, he stopped at the donkey, which pleased him. The word which isn't in there, but, but in Arabic, because the word himar is indefinite, you don't need to say which, you just say, he stopped at a donkey, it pleased him. 
Yeah, he was pleased with it. He stopped at a donkey. He was he was pleased with it. Yeah, very nice. Um, وَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ وَقَالَ So this is Joha who's saying, okay? And he said, لِصَاحِبِهِ So it doesn't mean the donkey's friend. It doesn't mean the sahib as in the friend. It means like the owner of it. A sahib, yeah, can be a companion or a friend, or it can also be kind of a, a owner of it. Um, yeah, sahib. It's um, it is quite. It is often used like that. So, so he stopped at the owner of it, the person in the market who was selling the donkey, right? So, and then بعد جدال بعد جدالين. So a جدال. If if you listen to the podcast on um, if you listen to the podcast on Monday when I was talking about words for like political discussions in Arabic, we came across the the verb جدله جدله, um, which means to to debate something. Um, yeah, I mentioned it being very similar to the verb ناقشة, which means to discuss. Um, ناقشة. But but yeah, جدال is the noun from the form three verb جدال, meaning to meaning to debate something. Um, yeah, you, you you might spot the similarity for those of you who are um, avid Quran readers or people memorizing the Quran. There is a surah of the Quran called Surah Al Mujadala, um, and the uh, yeah, that, and that's a, that's about a, a dispute. Um, between a wife and a husband, that sort of is, and it is from the same root. But this is just talking about a sort of a debate. A debate about what? على ثمن. So a ثمن is the price. Um, yeah, or the, the, the value, maybe. Um, the word for the price, a lot of the time, is a سعر. Is a سعر. كم السعر. People can say that. كم السعر. What, what, what's the price? But ثمن, the reason why I say it's different is because you... You, you can also have this term like ethmen. If something's ethmen, it's more valuable. Um, yeah, so perhaps the value of it maybe. But either way, the debate, I'm just talking about the nuances of, of that particular word, but, but either way, they're talking about how much he has to pay for it, right? Um, they're doing their bartering, which if you've been to the Arab world, you know that, that is, that's what you do in the market. You don't usually just pray, pay the price. Um, yeah, so he said, he, said to the, he said to the owner of it, meaning the donkey, after a debate about the value, about the price, he says, هذا كل ما معي الآن. Okay, this is a little trick that, um, a little trick that people often use when they're, when they're haggling in the market. I found it more common among people who aren't used to bartering. Um, so he says, هذا, this, كل, is all, ما, what, معي, is with me, الآن, now. This is all, this is, this is all what is with me now. Yeah, this is, this is all I've got with me. You know, it's particularly awkward. It's particularly awkward in the Arab world when you, <laughs> when, when, you, when you say, like, I don't know, say for example, like you're in Egypt. So I'm, I'm saying this example because it's very close to something that happened to me. It was like people come over to you and they want to sell you something, right? And I just wanted to practice my Arabic. So I was like bartering him down. I was like, I can't, I, I can't pay like, I think it was like 20, 20 Egyptian pounds for it. Um, I said, I can't pay 20 Egyptian pounds. I haven't got 20 Egyptian pounds on me. I was like, I don't have it. I was like, I've only got five. You know, we ended up somewhat coming somewhere in between. And then when it came for me to have to pay for it, I paid with a, with a 20 pound note. <laughs> and it's, it's like, I'm, yeah. Yeah, I made a lot of mistakes. A lot of, yeah. Made myself look quite stupid a lot of the time. But, but Alhamdulillah. Yeah, so, so anyways, that's the language. Um, that's what's going on there. We'll do a little bit more. For Imma and... So, yeah, saying فَإِمَّا is like saying so either. So either, th this fur that goes in the beginning as well, you know, re remember when you're writing that when you say fur, usually it means so, that you actually do add it onto the word that comes after it. I, I just mentioned because so many people, when I did my first episode of Grammar Time, so many people were blown away by the fact that when you say were, you shouldn't leave a space between the next word. Like here, it's well himar. We don't say wa el himar as like a separate word, right? A lot of people were blown away by that. Like a lot, a lot of people would just overlook that for their whole lives. But there's loads of things that do that. Like this fa will always do that as well. So fa meaning so. And then imma, yeah, it's like saying either. So either and tabi'ani. So the verb aba'a. Yabiru, this is tabiru, but because it's an before it, it becomes mansub. So tabi'a. Fa imma an tabi'ani. So either you sell it to me. 
So either you sell it to me, al himar, al himara. So either you sell to me the himar, yeah. on sorifu lahali. On sorifu just sort of means to leave or to go away. Um, yeah. Um, there's um, I can't remember it now, but there's there's a like there's a debate between some. I'm sure it's like in the Abbasid period or something. I remember reading like the transcript of this debate in Arabic, and um, it's between these two great like like polymaths. Yeah, one of them, one of them, I believe, was Al Khwarizmi, like the guy who's known for being like the inventor of algorithms. Um, he was one of them, and the other one was this this other guy, who who specifically I was studying in my second year at uni, and he makes this joke about um, he makes this joke about um, like the person who's debating, you need to like get out of here, or like he's been, you know. But by making him sound like a mamnorim and a sarf, like he does like a, a grammar rule joke to say like like you've been done, you should get out of here, and and yeah, says that he's like mamnorim and a sarf, but uses the term insiraf like from this verb instead of it. And uh, of course, he would have found that hilarious, as do I. And people who um, find a way to use grammar puns as a way of slamming people in a debate, I, I think that's hilarious. Um, yeah, but anyway, so in Sadaf, it kind of means to leave, right? It means to leave or to go away. So, lahali is a way of just saying by myself, okay? Either you sell it to me or I'll leave by myself. Very nice. Uh, for those of you who are, who are sort of lost on where we are, because I haven't been keeping all my annotations, we're here, okay? I've just talked about the word lahali to mean like by myself. A hal literally means a situation, my situation. I, I'm, I will leave just in my own situation. It's kind of, kind of like saying that. Um, akhiran. Akhiran is just a way of saying sort of at last or finally. Akhiran. So finally. Wafaqa rajulu. So wafaqa is another form three verb and it just means to to agree. Yeah. Wafaqa rajulu wa masha juha yajurru al himara khalfahu. So yeah, wafaqa rajulu. We're going to see another verb similar to wafaqa. Wafaqa just means to agree to something. But there's a verb ittafaqa, which means for like two people to, to agree with one another. Um, just like in this case, it's the man who's agreeing. It's just the man who's accepting, right? That's like what wafaqa is. But um, but the verb ittafaqa is to like have an agreement. An ittifaq is an agreement between two people. So the man agreed. Wa masha. Masha means to walk. Masha, and then the present tense, yamshi. Yamshi. Yeah, so he walked, joha. So joha walked, yajurru. The verb jarra, yajurru, uh, means to sort of drag or to pull behind you. Um, yeah, like if you're if you're leading a camel or a donkey or a horse or something, that's, that's the verb that you use for it. Um, it's relationship with saying that something is majrur, Case-wise in Arabic, I'm still investigating that. Um, I want to I want to package that bit of knowledge um, in a better way for you because when we talk about the cases in Arabic, especially like with the verbs, when you say that they are mejzum, that does have the term jezim is to squeezing something, right? And the, a mejzum verb, they are kind of squeezed. You cut things off the end and you you shorten vowels in them, like um, you know qala yaqulu. The jezim would be like yaqul. Lam yaqul, for example. Um, he did not say. Lam yaqul. Yaqul is kind of, that word's been squeezed. Um, and I wondered if majroor is to do with um, a word that is majroor, for example. It's often sort of dragging a harf jar behind it. You know, if, if you say like, you know, fil bayti is a very simple example. The word al bayti is majroor in this case, and its sign of being majroor is a kasra. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of dragging behind it. A preposition, right? A harf jar. I don't know if there is something there that I can kind of package knowledge-wise for you guys. Anyways, so he's pulling behind him the himar, khalfahu. Khalfa means behind. Um, yeah, khalfa means behind. There's also the term wara'a, um, which means behind as well, but they are slightly different. The two words they use say different. You, you'll notice it as you as you see it more often. Next, we have this this funny little word here. Let me let me let me sp- uh, sort of uh, cube around that. Farahu. So we've got a fa plus the verb ra'a. Ra'a. And then we have hu. So the reason why all of this here has just become a long elif, like a elif med, 
um, is because we really have a few things going on, right? We have we have we have the verb ra'a, which already has a hamza in it, but then we also would need to have an elif on the end because it's dual. Okay, we're talking about ifnani. We're talking about two people, so it's dual. So we'd we'd need like we'd need to have an elif on the end to make it dual. Farra farra farra. You know, and, and, and you know, often a rule when you have two hamzas next to each other, the the rule is that they just become like a med, and that's sort of what's going on here. So, um, and and then another reason is because this. I think something's happened to my. No, no, we're okay. We're okay. Another another thing as well is that. This is something that I'd like to add into. Uh, I'm gonna I'll maybe talk about this in next week grammar time, but if you have a word with an elif maqsura on the end, like if we were to say something like, um, if we were to say something like, um, yeah, mustashfa. Let's say let's use that example, mustashfa, mustashfa, mustashfa. If we were to say that, for example, if we were going to say like his mustashfa, his his hospital, yeah, if I was talking about his hospital. This this elif maqsura becomes an elif tawila, and we just add a hu on the end. That, that's how you do it. You say mustashfa hu, and you turn that into an elif maqsura. So with ra'a, we have like this that has to become an elif maqsura. We have a, sorry that has to become a long elif anyway because we're putting this hu on the end. And we have this long elif as well. So so we end up with like a ra, an elif with a hamzat qata on it, and then another elif, then another elif, and then a ooh. So so Arabic obviously knows that that's a horrible, horrible idea. Let's just say so ra, the two of them saw him. Who? Farahu. Who is it that saw him? Ifnani min al so um, ifnani is obviously a word for two. Um, so two, min al-lasus. So the, the word lis, lis is like a, a bandit or a thief of some sort. It's not, it's, it's more like a bandit. Like the term lis and the plural lasus. Um, lisson and the plural lasus. Um, so, so, that, so that's why we say it with a shadda. Min al-lasus, because there's a lamb. It is elif lamb to say that, but it's also, there's also a lamb at the beginning of lasus. Um, it's not just a, th a thief, like the, the verb to steal something is a saraqa, is the verb saraqa, and a thief is just a sariq. Um, but the term lis has like sort of a historical connotation of people in the desert who would, who would kind of, um, um, you know, these bandits who would sort of rob caravans. Um, that's kind of who the lasource were. Um, yeah, lissa. So two from the lasource. So we get the impression that because the writer has chosen not to say you know, has chosen not to say lisani. You know, it could have said farahu lisani. Two two thieves saw them. Gives us the idea that it's a group of lasus, and two from among them are the ones who who saw who saw Joha with the donkey. Um, again, now here we see that verb about agreeing that I talked about. Fa attafaka fa tafaka the verb attafaka. So yeah, so so the the two of them agreed. Okay, this long elephant at the end tells us that it's two of them. The two of them agreed. Ala sirqa. See, this is the word that I was talking about. Saraqa meaning to steal. So sirqati ala sirqa til til hamar. It's an ilafa. So if, if it was just if they agreed upon a thievery, they would just say, it would just say ala ala sirqatin. But because it's the thief of the donkey, we use an ilafa. Okay, so ala sirqa til hamar. So they, they agreed upon the stealing of the donkey, okay? So they're, they're kind of scheming at this point to, to steal the donkey. So that's where we're up to in the story of Joha. I'll read through it once more, once more, inshallah. Um, so yeah, so this is the Qissat the al-Joha, the story of Joha wal himar and the donkey. Arada Joha an yashtari himaran. Joha wanted to buy a donkey. فَذَهَبَ إِلَى السُّلْقِ So he, he went to the market. تَوَقَّفَ عِنْدَ حِمَارَ أَعْجَبَهُ He saw he saw a donkey. He, he stopped upon a donkey, um, which which he was pleased with. وَقَالَ لِصَاحِبِهِ بَعْدَ جِدَالٍ عَلَى الثَّمَنِ So he, 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 said to the, he said to the owner of it, he said to its owner after a discussion about the value or about the price, هَذَا كُلُّ مَا مَعِيَ الْآنِ This is all that's with me at the moment. This is all the money I have at the moment. 
um, فإما أن تبيعني الحمارة أو أنصرف لحالي So you can sell it to me You can sell the donkey to me Or I'll, I'll leave on my own أخيرا وافق الرجل ومشى جحا يجر الحمارة خلفه So um, the man agreed Okay, at last the man agreed, or eventually the man agreed, and and Joha walked, sort of pulling the donkey behind him. فَرَاهُ إِثْنَانِ مِنَ اللُّصُوصِ فَاتَّفَقَا عَلَى السِّرْقَةِ الْحِمَارِ So, um, two, two, two from among the لصوص, two from the, two from the thieves, saw, saw him, and they agreed, and they agreed upon, they agreed upon stealing of the donkey. Very nice. Congratulations. Good work. We've uh, we've made strides into our first ever um, walkthrough of the story of Joha. The stories of Joha are very short. We'll do part two next week, inshallah, and we'll see how we see how we get along. If you have any questions, stick them in the comments. If you have anything, any inquiries about my program or about anything else that I do, you can drop them in the comments as well. You can send me an email. If you have any other general questions, it is really good actually for you guys if you have questions to turn up on Sunday because on Sunday I do. I do like an opening of the newsletter that I put out every week, um, the Arabists Digest, you can sign up to it on my website. Um, and then at the end of it, we always get into some Q&A because I do it live. Um, and you guys always have questions. So come on Sunday um, and bring in your questions. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do the Friday live Q&A anymore because I'm hosting um, a show on Islam Channel. I'm hosting the Recite Show on Islam Channel um, on Fridays now. So... Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we get along, inshallah. We might just need to do the Q&As on Sundays, but either way, no problem at all. I'll maybe do it do it in uh, in the next lessons, Iralan, the next announcement of the next lesson. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget to help me out by liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're very close to 5,000 subscribers. I would love for us to hit 5,000 subscribers before the end of January. That would make me so happy if we could do that. Um, That'd be an awesome achievement for this channel. And then also help me out on Facebook and Instagram as well, because those two are nearly at 500. It would give me some pleasure as a person who is incredibly OCD to see 5,000 and 500 and 500 all at the same time. Um, that, that would give me some pleasure as a person who likes things being aligned that way. So um, that's it for the video. Hope you guys have a really, really lovely day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for our episode of Grammar Time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.